Um, self-care, do you practice this? Do you think that's a, you know, is that a good routine for you? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's part of the main dish. And what I say about the main dish, I always use this analogy of our plate. You know, you got your main dish, you got your prime rib, whatever you decide to eat. Uh, sorry for the vegans out there, you know, <laughs> you got your prime rib, you got your side items. And then a lot of people look at, uh, 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 developing others as like maybe a side salad that you get to right you know whatever mm -hmm. and then uh and then and then if you got time you get your dessert which is your self-care mm -hmm. well i think that's the wrong way to look at it mm -hmm. you know if you're full then you're not going to do it mm -hmm. self-care has got to be your appetizer <laughs> it's got to be the first thing you do to take care of your meal you know you then you get into that main dish and do all those things which pose a mission and taking care of others and all that stuff you know so i think um for me, it took a minute. Like, I would say that you know, when I talked about finally seeing the world through adult eyes, it took that before I realized I got to take care of myself. The person that got you into this mess isn't isn't the one to get you out. You got to be willing to change. That hit me. That hit me right here in the field. Um, <laughs> no, Dr. Phil, don't be, <laughs> don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by removing of your mind. Change begins in the mind. That's powerful. And then we urge you, brother. Yeah, I tell you, absolutely. So uh, for me, I think, uh, and, and this is, you know, I don't have the exact science on it, but uh, my first go there uh, was a little bit of a wake up, but some, some parts is so weird, right? Because you talk about emotional scars and psychological uh, stuff that goes on in, in early tra trauma and early childhood and stuff that I experienced. In some ways, that, that almost made me better at the task that I was given at that time because of my, uh, my care factor, uh, the, the outlook I had on life. Uh, I, I had no fear of those types of things. Uh, I, my kids were I only had one child at the time, Elijah my oldest and uh, he he wasn't I didn't know how to be a father so there was a lot of things that I, I can't extrapolate everything but there was a lot of things in my mind that, that my upbringing that, that don't give a you know what um, kind of mentality just take care of yourself take care of the people uh, keep everybody alive kind of thing and, and I was at a lot lower grade right there in first class with a lot of different uh, kind of expectations as a counter but um, you know, it's that mentality helped me a little bit, but then as you transition, right, if you mature in life, and I end up, you know, I would say my 2007 deployment was, was the hardest we, uh, in 2008, uh, I did back to back, so right off through seven through nine, and uh, lost 32, 32 people that I didn't know intimately, but I knew pretty close, or pretty close to this, our Marine Corps uh, security detachment, and we lost a couple of airmen, a couple of SI agents uh, that I knew. A couple and would people judge me on that differently than they are judging me? And people are congratulating me because my medical records is thick. They're like, man, you're going to probably get a good VA rating because your medical records. Yeah, are they do. They do. They do. So, but no one would, I would, and I thought about it. Would they congratulate me or would they look at me funny? That's the cultural thing that we have to change mm -hmm. because those two records are no different. No. These records may have arthritis in it and some skeletal issues and a couple of broken bones. And that's, that's what all that records have. A lot of MRIs and a lot of different things. This record just has a lot of talking to people and getting right and getting clarity and getting my family back together and getting myself back together and learning how to breathe through anxiety attacks. If I was to look at both of those records, man, I would probably always pick this record over here over all the pain in this record. So why do we take one and just really, really look at one and scrutinize it more than we look at the other one? I think that's just, you know, that's going to come down to honestly just normalizing the conversation. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Like I told you, it's going to come down to, you know, when people go to work, don't be afraid to put mental health on the whiteboard. You put dental on there, you put PHA on there. And I'm not telling you from a position of heroes. And it took me, it took me a long time to be comfortable with that. And I see in myself. Yeah. And that right there speaks volumes to the caliber of individuals that are out there. I'm I'm blessed because I still, you know, I've lost a lot of folks in my life. Uh, but a majority of the folks who actually watch me grow in this journey, they're still around, man. And I, I made a point to make them proud. For the time that they invested in me, I made a point to make sure that I was going to give, give back so that they understand. Me.